until hopefully they give up and you hope that no, this doesn't end um, in a bad or tragic way. Okay, hold way. on, hold on. You it looks like he just, just hit the side, side of a, a vehicle. Yeah, another yeah. SUV. And uh, we have Darren White on the phone, right? Darren Wyatt, uh, retired police sergeant. And Darren, what can you oh, tell us? Oh, just side swiping this? another vehicle right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guys, Ross and Leslie. So, uh, yeah, uh, very dangerous here. Uh, high speeds on narrow streets, residential area here with a lot of traffic. Sideswiping vehicles on the wrong side of the road and blacked out mm. without lights on. Yeah. At this point, you, we just saw him make a turn. Darren, can you tell us, do you know anything about who may be in this vehicle? Take oh, a look. Hold on. A lot people of times the they streets. have those fr food vendors, mm -hmm. those people on alert you saw them there kind of just backing away from that vehicle but darren do we know anything about who may be driving this vehicle or how many people may be inside no at this point we don't we haven't heard anything from uh, ontario pd who initiated the pursuit and then turned it over to the chp all we know is that we've got tinted windows we can't really see inside and it's believed to be a stolen vehicle oh oh, 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 oh. you see that intersection there yeah. uh darren yeah. pretty close Crazy. there yeah yeah, very little known. In fact, we don't even know how many people are in the car, what circumstances uh, the SUV was allegedly stolen in. It looks like he's going down perhaps an alleyway right now. Uh, very dark out there. Even the SUV looks like it turned. Oh, look, it yeah. just missing another car. You know, the danger, Darren, obviously increasing uh, as th this SUV continues to wind into smaller and smaller streets. Yeah, and uh, eventually it could end up in a dead end here. It doesn't mm -hmm. look like they're real familiar with it. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> just driving around uh, through the residential neighborhoods here, trying to probably find a place where they can bail out on foot. Uh, I have not seen any ground units close behind them. All mm -hmm. I've seen is the airship at this point. Is that because um, they want to de-escalate the situation? Uh, would that be why we don't see any ground units here? Oh, wow, yeah, this that's certainly, guy that's just going past another when, vehicle. When, when, the, uh, when the driving gets real erratic like this, and, and uh, if we're only talking about a stolen vehicle here, uh, the, the risk versus reward gets too high. And look, going through these intersections is very, mm -hmm. very dangerous. So it's, it's uh, highly likely that the watch planner called for the ground unit to back off and let the helicopter track it just mm -hmm. because of the dangerousness of the pursuit. Yeah, Darren, the very last update we got was that they were backing off and uh, in tracking mode. There was a moment where we saw uh, police vehicles, ooh, right there in the intersection, so close, so close. Uh, yeah. We saw police vehicles near this SUV, but it almost looked like they were surprised to be coming at each other in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this guy driving, it looks like he does not know the area, because you know in the past when we see them on these side streets, they seem to slow down and know precisely where they're going. So, uh, yeah it seems like not from here. Right, and in this instance, we're seeing them going through red lights at 60 miles an hour, uh, almost T-boying cars in almost every intersection that he goes through against a red light. Uh, you know, high speeds up to 75 miles an hour now. And again, still blacked out. There's no headlights on the vehicle, so oncoming traffic can't really see it. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll probably see the night sun from the helicopter, but they don't even have the benefit of seeing ground units with the lights and siren behind the vehicle. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> very, very dangerous for uh, innocent motorists and pedestrians, bystanders on the streets in this situation. Yeah, you just kind of flinch every time this person goes through an intersection. Darren, if this thing starts to uh, slow down here, if this person starts to follow the rules of the road, do you think that police would then um, come back, those ground units would come back to try to get this person um, to, to, to come to an end, really? Yeah, certainly. Uh, you know, if it slows down and it's the, the danger, the level of danger uh, de-escalates somewhat, then the ground units will come back and will re-engage until such time as it, it you know, the, it outweighs the, uh, the safety again. Uh, however, there are ground units who will be in tracking mode. They will be trailing it. They're listening to the helicopter. They're telling them where, where the suspect is going to be. In the event that the car pulls over and the people bail out on foot, they'll be able to set up a perimeter. And we see this thing happen time and time again in Southern California. It's just a matter of time before they get caught. And Darren, it looks like, uh, you know, he's picking up speed. It looks like a more major road here in East L.A. Uh, can you give us the bigger picture? Uh, 
can you guess where he's heading? Is he headed anywhere towards a freeway on Going this road? Right through another yeah. intersection. Yeah. My, my crystal ball is not working at Icross. <laughs> I, I mean no that direction, though. Where he's going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, we don't know where he's going to go, and uh, we don't even know if he knows where he's going to go at this point, other than trying to uh, evade the police. But you know, take a look. He, oh, he actually like he's bailing. He just bailed, bailed out of the vehicle. Just bailed there. Didn't he's even running on the sidewalk. Yeah, that vehicle still kept going. going. Uh, and no ground units here, but it looks like Ontario PD has him right there in their spotlight. And you know, Ross, he just walked right by some man that was walking on the roadway there. So I uh, don't know if this guy knows where he's going. Unfortunately, oh. it looks like he's trying to possibly get, get into, into this, this home, yeah. which, can, which can be extremely dangerous because we're hoping that most people, this is why we put these on TV. We want to alert people, close your doors. Um, yeah. These people are dangerous. It looks like now he's getting into possibly this wooded area, these trees, um, possibly in this backyard here, uh, maybe. He's don't at know, Eastern doesn't and know where South to go. Gate, so, Just does uh, not know where to go. Look, if you have a home in this area of East LA, lock your doors and don't go near the windows because this guy looks like he's trying to get in here somewhere. You know, it looks like he yeah, now it jumped like the he's fence. Lost steam as well. He's yeah. not running as fast. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the helicopter's there. They're going to spot him. They're calling in the ground units. What we don't know is if there was anybody else in that vehicle still and if it crashed yeah. into anything as it continued rolling when he bailed out. It looks like he's at Hamill Street and Southgate in East LA and now he's gone into an area with some uh, trees and vegetation. Uh, a little hard for the chopper to see precisely where he is yeah. at this well, moment. It, you know, Ross, the chopper will be equipped with FLIR mm -hmm. forward-looking infrared. Mm -hmm. They'll be able to see the heat signature, uh, and this will be a perfect scenario to use a canine, uh, you know, in these kinds of situations. They know generally where he's at. They'll have a perimeter. They'll call him out. If he doesn't come out, they'll likely send in a canine to go and get him. Okay, look at this video we're recueing here. This is him bailing out right there, and you see the SUV still going mm -hmm. uh, forward. And this guy running down the street, it looks like at one point he's trying to get in uh, some of these homes. He runs right by someone standing in the street. Yeah, and then just keeps going. Um, at this point, I want to see if we can take the larger photo, the, the live, because I wanted to see where police were. And you can see them there staged at the intersection. If yeah. We can actually, uh, John Schreiber, go give us a, a large view of this, a wide view. I just want to see where right, we see those news. officers there mm -hmm. at the intersection. As Darren, you just said, the uh, even though our helicopters aren't equipped with this, but um, we do know that uh, the police uh, helicopters. There's the SUV. Yeah, there the you go. Way. They're equipped like with infrared lighting. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. Yeah, it's called forward-looking infrared, and what it will do is it'll detect heat signatures, uh, and it'll detect the, the the body heat from the suspect. Um, in, you know, likely hiding under these trees here, and then they'll be able to, to at least know where he's at. They'll be able to make announcements from the helicopter ordering him to come out. Uh, they'll make announcements on the ground, and if he doesn't, uh, then they'll probably get a canine out and uh, start doing their search with the canine. Definitely. I wonder if, uh, John, if we can get a look. Um, I was speaking, so we couldn't really go into it. We can get a look at that uh, SUV that this person was driving. Yeah, because the big question is, was someone in that passenger seat? Uh, did this person steal the SUV? Was someone still inside? Was anyone hurt? It looks like uh, police are on scene, and I can't quite see, but it looks like there may be. Is there someone there by the driver's door moving around? Uh, maybe an officer, that, can you see? That's that, likely an officer doing a search and clearing the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is someone on the other side, on the passenger side of the vehicle. You could see moving around there. Yeah, you kind of wonder how this thing came to an end. Uh, we do want to show you video from earlier here. I believe this may be the moment uh, that they sideswiped a trash can. Um, here you just see them rolling through uh, some red lights there through the Southgate East LA area just whipping past all of these turns at 50 60 miles per hour. Uh, at one point this driver did sideswipe we believe a vehicle as well as a trash can. Mm -hmm. um, again just blowing past intersections and this right all starting there. in Ontario which is quite a ways away. Yeah, he went down down the 60. You just saw in the video that's playing on the right side of your screen him when he uh, zoomed by authorities. If we can go back to the full picture uh, of the live on the left-hand left side of the screen. Darren, what is going through officers' minds right now? What is happening, do you believe? Do you think they're getting the information from the chopper, from uh, their flare system about where yeah. this guy is in the trees? 
Yeah, absolutely. They've got a perimeter set. Uh, they've got, and you can see the vehicle, the, the police unit there in what we would call a perimeter. They've got it locked down. They know the area where he was last seen. Uh, the helicopters most likely got him on FLIR or telling the officers where he's at. Uh, they'll be making announcements. You see other officers arriving there now. Uh, those are highway patrol officers there, maybe uh, L.A. County Sheriff's deputies looking at the uniforms. Uh, but, yeah, uh, they're just waiting for reinforcements to get there. They're probably going to get a canine uh, out mm -hmm. to the scene, and then they'll start calling him out. And if he doesn't come out, they'll start the search.